right, so I got my guest here at the shop club at the Dallas Real Estate Society. This is Rachel Ludicky. She's the president of the Association for Corporate Growth here in Dallas, that's ACG. She's also the due diligence lead at Westwood Associates who handle civil engineering surveys, uh, environmental surveys, and I'm actually also a client of hers. And she's actually made a ton of really great introductions. So welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for the introduction. All right, so let's jump right into the High Performance Podcast. And we're gonna talk about high performance. Now, we've been talking a little bit earlier today about whenever things don't go that great. So first of all, we'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about, do you have any specific high performance habits that you use, either habits, some mentalities, some thought patterns, anything like that, that keep you at a high performing level? I really do. I work with a, a leadership coach who works with me on, on the seven energy levels, okay? And the, the lowest energy level being that of a victim where no one's winning, okay? All the way up through, I'm winning, you're winning, we're both winning, there is no competition to, you know, absolute visionary energy level where it's not even a competition. This is just the joy of being here and, and working um, and, and performing um, at, your, at your best. And, and really, it's just about um, knowing your energy level, where you're at and where you want to be and probably where you should be. <laughs> I love that. I haven't heard it broken down that way, mm -hmm. but it's so obvious that using blame and victimhood is going to keep you as low as you can possibly go. That's correct. That's correct. It was eye-opening when I learned about it. Um, I've been working with this gal for about two years, and when she showed me that, I myself was at a kind of a low point in my, um, I guess not in my professional career, but in my energy level. I was, you know, I just felt kind of um, overwhelmed and, and a little beat down and and just by recognizing that energy level you can begin to make a conscious effort to bring it up that's amazing and so also kind of related by getting rid of blame and victimhood all of those levels are like more responsibility onto yourself first of all that victim like you were saying mm -hmm. I don't have any responsibility it's all happening to it's me all happening to and me. then right. I'm winning I'm taking responsibility and then I'm taking responsibility for you and I both winning all the way up. I don't remember the different levels, but there's more responsibility all the way up at each level. Correct. Um, and, and until you reach the point where it's not even a competition, you just, you just are and you're connected to you know, the highest energy level in the, in the, that the universe has to offer. Um, so I'm not there. I'm not there. I, we all want to win. Um, and so right now I'm, I'm really focusing on trying to make the situations I'm in win-win, um, okay? Not just I win or not just you win, not just make sure my customer is taken care of, but make sure that the outcome is positive for, for all parties involved. I love it. So let's talk about ACG for a minute. Now you've become the president of ACG and yeah. now Dallas is a big group. How many people are, would you say are members? We have just shy of 700 members in wow. the Dallas-Fort Worth chapter. So, That's right. So we do cover the Dallas and Fort Worth Metroplex. And so what is ACG? It's the Association for Corporate Growth. What does Correct. that mean? It is middle market M&A and the surrounding ecosystem of uh, bankers, lawyers, CPAs, uh, developers, private equity, um, family office and consultants alike. So what is the middle market? 50 to 250 million dollar deals generally, um, and and really the anyone who who plays in that space um, will probably get something out of uh, being an ACG member or attending an ACG event. And they can contact you to, to become members. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And we're gonna we're gonna do all your socials and stuff in a little bit so they can contact you. So that puts you in contact, and you're basically surrounded, and you've risen to leadership levels in this high performing group. I'm gonna guess. Probably not a lot of deadbeat, low-performing type folks are no. doing $50 million to $250 million deals, correct? They're really not. They're really not. And, and I found my way through the organization by doing what I say I'll do. And turns out that's not as commonplace as you would hope. So when I, 
even in, in like, um, when did I join the group? 2016, I think I joined ACG. And in 2018 or 19, they awarded me, to my surprise, the Meritorious Service Award, which is given to about five, I think, five or six members out of the 14,000 worldwide. Um, and really, I just, I was so surprised because I just, I was raised to do what I say I'm going to do. And, and that's what I did, that's what I do in my professional life, that's what I do for ACG, that's what I do in my personal life. I do what I say I'm going to do. And, um, and that will get you very far, apparently. Apparently. I mean, again, it's just how I was raised. And it's pretty obvious from just by doing that what you've been able to accomplish. Right, so I kind of stumbled into the membership committee there um, at ACG. One of the first events I went to, um, I, got, I got hooked into that. So. Uh, it was it was fine. I, I performed on the membership committee as I should have, and as I as I said, I do what I say I'm going to do. So I'm tasked with things. I do them. It was it was a successful um, uh, successful venture, and you know we ended up growing the organization, and then I ended up um, in the president elect seat and the president seat, and here I am finishing out my year and a half term as president of ACG DFW. So I will, I'll finish up my term the end of this calendar year and take my victory lap. I love it. So I want to talk about something you taught me. As a matter of fact, I copy you. I'm an active copier. When oh. I see something that works for people, when I see somebody that I look up to and admire like I do with you, I copy. I just straight do exactly the same thing. I don't get too smart about it. I say stupid. I say, I, I stay, I say to myself, just stay dumb. Don't try to rethink it and reinvent it. So you make introduction emails. Correct. This is a big part of what you do as president All the time. and as a part of your professional career. You just make introduction emails from people you think might work together. I love connecting dots. Yeah. And so you introduced me to probably almost 10 different M&A intermediaries, bankers, um, fund managers, some people that have some real pull and some real influence in what I'm doing and I've also some of them have actually become uh, pseudo mentors whether they know it or not I love that have sort of become mentors to me now just from you connecting me to them and so I started copying you so talk about I do that as much as I can every networking event that I go to I look through cards so mm -hmm. I made it a habit of about once a week I'll take a whole bunch of cards out and I'll just go through them and I'll just lay out 10 or 20 cards on my desk. And eventually, just by having the cards out, I see a connection. Oh, Rob needs to meet Kristen. Oh, Jason needs to meet Gregory. And I start putting them together and trying to make introduction emails. And it's done wonders for me because, mm -hmm. for example, one of the people that I connected to somebody else had been telling me, no, we're not going to fund a deal for you. We're not going to fund a deal. That's not really something we're into. That was maybe four months ago. Now after connecting them to that person to about four other people and getting thank you, thank you, thank you, a bunch of gratitude from that, now that person is sitting down and probably going to fund this next deal with us to the tune of about $2.2 million. That's so exciting. So we made $2.2 .2 million by copying you. <laughs> so I, I hope you um, take that as a, as a compliment and as... Thank you sure. for teaching that to me. Absolutely. It's been amazing. Imitation being the highest form of flattery, right? Yes. Um, you know, I just love connecting the dots, whether or not it benefits me in any way. Um, and so uh, anywhere I go, I will tell people, hey, I have a lot of connections. I may not look like I do, but I do. Creep my LinkedIn. And if you see someone that you want to be connected to, please let me know. And, and everybody wins. Everybody wins. I look good for connecting the dots on, on the other side. Maybe it's someone I haven't talked to in a long while, and they say, thanks for thinking of me. I say, of course. Of course. Um, it just, everybody wins. Sometimes I come up with them on my own. Sometimes people ask me. But, um, you know, I, I did it today. I had, I had um, uh, my company is going through a, a financial audit, and we're soliciting some CPA firms um, to do this. And so I, I spoke with our, our CFO and said, hey, um, do you need some introductions to some of these firms? I have them. And she said, oh my gosh, yes. Please, who do you know at blah, blah, blah? I said, I got you. So it's, it's who you know, but really just, it, to me it's about just being selfless. It doesn't always have to be about me. 
yeah, it might benefit my company, but it has nothing to do with me directly. So just be selfless and um, just connect the dots where you see they need to be connected. That's all it is. It's Great. that simple. It is that simple. So let's talk about whenever things don't go the way that you're planning. Because a lot of times, you know, we kind of think of success as a trajectory and we're moving up. But there's a lot of times when it might be out of your control, it might have been in your control, maybe you made a mistake, maybe somebody else made a mistake, it doesn't matter. Things aren't going the way that you had planned in either a project or on a, on, even on the entire career path. So whenever things start to go off track, how do you personally get back into staying calm and staying focused and all those kind of things? Do you have any either mental exercises, physical things you do with your body, anything that can get you back on track? I really have to go back to the seven energy levels and decide where I want to fall on that, on that chart, okay? Do I want to be a victim and just start blaming people? Probably not the best course, especially, especially in a professional environment. So I, I will resort almost immediately to the, to the everyone wins, okay? I, I need to win because I don't need to I don't need to have um, I don't need to have the company's name rubbed in the dirt my my personal name, um, but I need the client to also be served. Okay, we need to meet this need. We need to find a problem to the solution. So I just I really immediately go to problem solving. Um, so it's more a mindset of solve the problem. What has to be done to solve? What is the problem? Identify the problem. Solve the problem. What do I need to do? Can I do it, or do I know someone else who can do it? So, um, you know, like I said, I've got a really big network, and we have a lot of great people in our company. So I'll either, I'll either reach inside or outside, and find someone who can solve the problem and just go to work. I was I was just telling someone else a bit ago, even in a, a family emergency, uh, we had a, a death in the family seven or eight years ago. And my sister is off in the corner wailing and crying. And I'm like, where are the passwords? Let's get to work. What do we need to do to move this forward? That's really it. Just solve the problem. And if you can't, find someone who can. What do you see people fail at whenever they can't solve the problem? What are they focused on? Why, why can't probably they solve it? Probably trying to do it themselves. That's probably the, the, the quickest way you're going to fail is try to do it all yourself. Because you cannot. You are not everyone, you are not everything. So bring in the people who can. See, I call that who, not how. You go find the who that knows how to do it instead yeah. of you focusing on how to do it when it's not even your focus or your skill anyway. Yep. And that actually fits right into what you do at Westwood. We're consultants. We're consultants. Yeah, we solve a variety of problems, but I can't solve them all, but I have a team of people who probably can. And being the due diligence lead, that's part of your gig is to connect the right people right. to the right problems that they can solve. Exactly. Uh, whether that's you know a, a contractual problem or a physical problem at the at the project, um, maybe we've maybe we've come across. For instance, I, I had a, a rather large client that I I called out a potential problem to them, and it actually. Um, it actually caused them to, to pivot a couple of different ways away from a certain developer who thought it wasn't a problem, who would have glossed over it and potentially gotten my client in a lot of trouble. So find the right people to do the right jobs. Sounds like there's a lot of integrity in that as well. There really is. Um, and because environmental can be so subjective, um, you, re you really, really have to operate with a high level of integrity. Um, because you're not the only person or the only entity looking at that piece of land. Someone else could come in behind you and do the same thing again, maybe do it better, maybe find something different. But they're still going to have a hold of your report and say, what's this trash? I don't want to be, I don't want to be in that position. And then it's got your name and your company's name on it. It's got my name it. and it's got my company on it. So it's got I'm, your reputation on it. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I don't. I don't need that kind of press. So, no, my, myself and my team operate with a, a very high level of integrity. Let's talk about Westwood some more. So give your pitch on Westwood because you sold us on it. We've used, we've used your company as a, uh, consultants on projects that we're doing. 
What's the pitch on Westwood? Sure, sure. We are we're we're full service environmental and engineering. Okay, anything commercial, residential, or even utility scale wind and solar, we can serve the whole project turnkey from site and land selection all the way through construction, operation, and even decommissioning. We can write plans to decommission your wind or solar farm. We've all seen the disasters on the news with the, the broken flaming wind turbine. We can write the, the mitigation plans to address those kind of problems when they when those happen. Everything has a lifespan. So um, that's that's really what, what kind of makes it exciting for me is we've got the whole project, not just a piece of it. Not just the site selection, not just the engineering or the survey. Uh, but we can take your entire project, whether it's a, a residential division, subdivision, uh, a commercial shopping center, or like I said, wind and solar, and we can take that project from site selection through decommissioning. Um, and and we've really, we've even recruited um, you know some new employees from other firms on on just that that concept right there because there are so many other firms that that are so niche into a space that the people don't get to see the whole project go through from start to finish. They just get to see part of it. And, and it's, it's very satisfying, honestly. So it not only meets people's needs um, as, a, you know, as a profession, as a career, and a, a job that you're doing and that you're proud of, um, but you get to see the whole thing from start to finish. And, and it is very, very satisfying. So tell us a little bit about, uh, personally, where did you come from? I grew up right around here, um, just 114 to the west. I grew up in Trophy Club, and and it was a very, it was a relatively small community in the 80s, and and I grew up on a cul-de-sac, and and it was just kind of an idyllic childhood, you know, to grow up on a cul-de-sac. Our address had one digit. Um, it was it was just so quiet, and it, you know, we could just. I could grow up in, 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 in freedom and do whatever I wanted to do, you know? Um, it, was, it was really amazing growing up kind of in the, I guess in the, in the, it wasn't quite the country, but it was deep suburbia for sure. Um, but yeah, I grew up right here. I went to Northwest High School. Uh, I went to Texas A&M after that, fighting Texas Aggie class of 2001. And, um, and I started working in consulting right after that. So. Um, let's see, I, I don't have any, any human children, but I have animal children. So my, <laughs> my horse was born in 2002. She's an O2 model, so she's 20 this year. And uh, have three cats and a great guy. And really, just growing up in the suburbs um, was just, it, it kind of made me who I am just based on, on, on the people that I grew up around, our, our family friends and our, our neighborhood culture that we had there. Um, I've also got a, a heart for wildlife rehab, and, and that's something that I would, I'd love to get into a little more. I don't quite have the, the freedom in my lifestyle or my financial status to, to do that, but, but it's definitely something that's, that's on my mind that I, I would seek to do in the future. And, and that, again, comes from one of, the, one of the ladies on our block who would just, she would rescue things, whether it was a raccoon or an egret, you know? And, um, and I just took that with me the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, I've even, I've had, a, I've had wild animals in my house and rehabbed <laughs> multiple baby squirrels. And, you know, um, it's just part of my life. People call me the squirrel lady. The squirrel lady. Yeah. Do you think whenever your, uh, your term as ACG president is over, that might be a little something you can expand into? I hope so. I hope so. There's another board that I'm also on, and it is through my degree at the at Texas A&M University, and it's the Bioenvironmental Sciences Professional Board. So I'm going really from one term into another, and those are two-year terms. And what we do is uh, consult with the professors in our uh, in that degree plan on the curriculum, um, engage the existing students that are in the program, um, help them you know transition to full-time jobs because as college students, you don't know what that is. You don't know how to do that. Um, and then as well as bring in high school students into the program. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, but that's another, that's another two year board term. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of service. Just one more thing. Yeah, it's a lot of service. It is, it is. And, and ACG is a very uh, service oriented group. 
um, the, the BESC professional board, very service oriented and, and, um, and even the, the wildlife rehab is purely, purely service and heart and, and dedication. That's great. Well, we're getting to the, uh, the last question that I ask everybody. And uh, well, first of all, before we do that, let's talk about how do folks get in touch with you? Now you mentioned your LinkedIn. Sure, my name is Rachel Ludicky. And that's a pretty unique last name, so people yes, should is. be able to find it. Um, let's see, uh, Westwood Professional Services is the name of the company. So my email is, you know, first name dot last name at westwoodps.com. And, um, but yeah, they should be able to find me pretty easily via LinkedIn. Um, and if you're an ACG member, you can find me on the ACG database. I'm, I'm all over LinkedIn. There's, there's always um, some event that I'm, I'm repping for ACG or beyond or, or, or Westwood. I love the groups. I'm a big in the groups too. I'm in uh, Investment Fund Secrets and uh, with Bridger Pennington. And I'm also in um, Vistage with John Savanto here in town. You know yes. John, right? Yes, I do know John. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dallas group here. So those groups that you're talking about like ACG is, all the kind of groups that you can get into have been so important to me. They've connected me to you. They've connected me to all the people that put this on. And so here comes the last question for the night. We're gonna imagine now that this is the very last time that you're ever gonna appear. This little podcast is gonna be the last message that you ever get out to the world, to your family, oh to everyone you love. And it's going out and being seen by everyone in the entire world. What's your message? Rachel Ludicky to the world. You know, the ACG tagline is relationships are the deal. And, and that really carries through any other part of your life. Relationships are the deal. It's who you know. Um, lean, on your, lean on your friends. Lean on your, on your confidants. Lean on people that are better than you. Surround yourself with people that are better than you because you can't do it all. That's really, don't try to do it all yourself. You know, it's too hard. It's too hard. Relationships are the deal. That's really it. Yes, they are. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, thank you for being a co host of tonight's event. Of Rachel Luke. Thank you, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here at the Derby Restaurant inside the Shop Club in Dallas. If you haven't been here, come by and check it out. It's a wonderful place. We've had a wonderful event. They book wonderful events here. Thank you to Sarah and George who put this event on for us. This is the Dallas Real Estate Society Group Once a Month Mixer where we get together. I'll be doing podcasts here again next month. From me, my name is Alex Alexander. I'm the Hawaii Landman. If you want to find me on any social media, go look out. Uh, you can search at Hawaii Landman. That'll take you to my link tree. And it's got all my videos and anything you might ever want to know about me. Thank you to my business partners, Mark McIntyre, who's here tonight. Happy birthday to John McGaw, who's in Las Vegas tonight. It's his birthday. He's our capital raiser. That's our other partner. And we appreciate y'all sticking around and hanging out with us here for the High Performers Podcast. From me, Alex Alexander. I want you to ask yourself, what can I do today to take my performance to the next level? It's going to next level your life. Take care.